present today because Paul is so lovely and <laughs> Jane Thompson as well was so lovely that she went to do this presentation in my second year. So the topic, when I, when I was in my second year placement, I had a really good experience and a fantastic mentor. Um, she was really, really good. I would say that she's probably what I would think would be a perfect teacher, to be honest with you. Um, and she implemented a, a disciplinary approach to the topic and it was extreme environment with by the way, my slides are timed for seven minutes as well. So we, they'll probably be in well for an awkward bit. We'll probably appreciate that. Um, so I said I'm second year place when we me and Mark came in. And it was, uh, we went there, it was already on So it was extreme environments, the topic was. And basically, it was, I'm focusing on collaborative group work within this. But there was a lot else that was fantastic about it. There was just a, a great classroom ethos among other things that just this topic brought with it. So basically I'll give you a wee bit of background on how this topic came to be. It was all completely child-led. There was no teacher instruction at all. The teachers were basically there to facilitate, which I suppose is the idea of what we should be doing anyway. Um, how it came about was the class all sat down, they all sat before, there was actually 63, and the end of our class 64 pupils across a, a shared classroom. And they all sat down on the floor and they asked what, what would we do, what do you want to do, and they decided the extreme environments. From then on, they, just, they, they thought, what kind of environments do we get? So, for example, the Arctic, Antarctica, the Great Barrier Reef, all areas like this came out from that. Then they, just, then they sat down again, they got a big piece of paper, what would we learn about, and they picked out different um, things that we could do, that every area could explore further. So they all had a kind of big instruction of what to do and then they went into groups. How the collaborative groups were decided there wasn't anything, um, there wasn't like ability groups and anything like that at all. They just wrote their name on a piece of paper and they wrote what environment they would like to go into and put it in a ballot. So when they drew them all out, it worked, it actually worked out that they were fairly even except from one group which was actually only three girls within the one group. But they actually worked better than most of the others. I would say that the groups are probably friendship groups because I think they probably sit beside their friends and said, what are you going to write? But it actually worked really, really well. So what I'm going to want to look at is the advantages and disadvantages of what collaborative group work was. Um, because obviously you can read as much as you want in the books, but when you go out there it's a lot harder anyway. Um, I'll start with the disadvantages because they're the negatives. And I'll <coughs> anyway. um, the first thing that's like everything you would think would be the noise level in the class and I suppose that just comes down to what kind of teacher you are. For me I would have thought that the noise level in our class was because of how busy they were. And okay sometimes they were on task but if you went up and asked any one of those pupils a question about their given area they knew and their answer they could tell you they could tell you the depth of the Mariana's trench just like that and obviously we didn't know that. So um, another thing was it was difficult to know if everybody was on task but that's why the teachers were there and then me and Rachel as students were there as well to go in and try and help. Some groups were better than others, but like I said, the ones that were on task, it didn't mean that they didn't know what was going on. Okay, they maybe weren't contributing quite as much, but they were, they were learning. Anyway, um, another thing was disputes within groups, but I think something that was learned from the disputes was that because they had to justify a stance, they had to justify why they thought something should be included in their given area. It made them learn more from it because they had to justify it and they had to think, well, hold on, that might actually be right. And they, they took on each other's opinions. Um, one disadvantage, which I would say was, was very difficult to get around, was we actually had a child in our classroom in the fall and he had absolutely no English. Or he, but he could understand, but he just would not speak. So he was really left out within his group, he just kind of sat, but he did, you could see him sometimes going and have a look around for some things, but he would never speak to you about it, so he was not getting the like, true communication, he wasn't getting anything like that, but he was doing kind of, I suppose he was doing things like cutting out, so in a way he was, but I think for him it maybe it wasn't quite as beneficial, but then he was doing quite good to get to the stage he was at anyway. Um, there was one particular group that sort of kind of always needed a wee bit of somebody leaning over checking they were on task. Um, it just, I think, something about that is if you set group like roles within the group, that might have been 
helped a wee bit further, but like I said, they did all know, <coughs> they knew their subject inside out. Um, the advantages for the group work, collaborative group work, was children, they're always learning from each other and they're far more enthusiastic when they're working within their group, especially when it was with their peers. I think that they bounced off one another's enthusiasm and they motivated each other to learn. Um, it developed their social skills because there was a certain amount of people, strange characters within the class and I think it really brought them on, especially when they had to work with children that they maybe wouldn't have done if they didn't have to. Um, the collaborative group work, it was taken on and it was used in other areas, for example in language, they would do subjects that were related to their topic, but it was also related in other areas they worked on, they made stories together, so they took those skills and applied them elsewhere. Um, I think the fact is it was not ability group, it actually was quite good because the stronger pupils actually helped on the weaker ones, and just because they weren't maybe as good at language or maths and they drawn up their graphs and everything, it didn't mean that they didn't have strengths in other areas, like their art, so they could actually use all the different strengths that they had within the group. Just so interesting and that's really me. So <laughs> thank you.